It does seem to me one of the central issues in, in practical ethics is, is what obligations we have, if any, to future generations, that is people who will or who may come after us, not people who exist uh, now. And Derek's main contributions to the discussion of future generations came in Reasons and Persons. In the section on future generations, Derek um, made some new discoveries and he clarified certain things which people had sort of half seen before. So, for example, he identified what he called the non-identity problem. This is the problem that, or a set of problems that arises when you realise that what you do now may affect the identity of people who live in future. So, uh, consider our use of resources as Derek did. We are, we're using resources rather intensively uh, and this may make human life in future on the planet much less comfortable uh, for the people in future than it might have been. Now Derek noticed that it wouldn't really be very sensible in a, in a sense for future people who are living in this slightly less comfortable world to complain about what we're doing now because if we decided to conserve resources now, they wouldn't, if we had decided to conserve resources, they wouldn't be in existence. Different people would be in existence. So in a sense, we haven't harmed anybody. We've brought into, people be, uh, we've brought into being people who are now living lives which are, are less good than they would have been. And that, Derek thought, I think rightly, suggests that ethics is, is more impartial than we might have thought. It's not so much to do with whether you're benefiting or harming particular identifiable people. It's more that you've got to step back and think about life being lived in the world by certain individuals, of course. It doesn't matter who they are, though. And you should ask yourself, what's the quality of life in the world? Not have I benefited people or have I, have I harmed them? Now, one tempting view, then, is to think, well, what we should do, then, is make the future as good as possible in terms of the amount of happiness that there is around, the amount of well-being there is. Um, and Derek, Derek saw that one natural way to, to develop that thought is as the utilitarian idea that we ought to maximise um, well-being. And this led him to his so-called repugnant conclusion, which is another thing that he's quite... Uh, famous before um, and according to this, uh, this this conclusion if we take a world let's take a world like ours with 10 billion people in it all living lives of a very high quality the highest quality we can imagine there must be some other world with vastly more people in it who are leading lives which are barely worth living and that second world would be better because overall it contains more, more happiness. So in other words, the, you're, you have to trade off quality against quantity. So you'd say, well, you know, if you've got this 10 billion world, you might think, well, if there's another world in which we can have, say, 20 billion people and their lives are just slightly worse, that's going to be better. And you go down a scale until you reach what Derek called World Z, which is where everybody's leading these lives that are barely worth living and he he couldn't accept that conclusion and he found it very worrying because I think he was attracted to the utilitarian idea but it seemed to lead to, to this terrible conclusion and you know, in this world many of the things that he cared about like music and philosophy and maybe friendship just wouldn't exist because people would, would be struggling just to uh, keep the you know the quality of their lives at the positive um, level now, one way I think you can solve the repugnant conclusion is to say that at some point you won't give up quality anymore for more quantity. So you say, look, we've, we've, done, we've gone, gone a certain way. We've now got, say, 100 billion people you know, leading lives of reasonably high quality. Uh, and we're now going to stop. We're not, we're not going to sacrifice any more quality for any more quantity. 
And that's what people call discontinuity. There's a kind of discontinuity here in the, uh, in the measurements. Uh, and Derek again articulated that uh, view in a, a paper separate from, that came later than uh, Reasons and Persons. But he didn't like it because it looks kind of arbitrary. You know, how do you say, how do you decide where that point is, that specific point? Isn't it a bit crazy to say, I'm not going to give up any more quality for any number of, um, of future people? And rather uh, excitingly, though in Reasons and Persons, Derek ended uh, by saying he couldn't uh, solve the problem of future generations, uh, in recent years, he claims that he has uh, solved it with something he calls Theory X, uh, which relies on certain views about precision um, that as yet haven't, haven't uh, achieved consensus in the philosophical community, but are certainly worth uh, thinking about. Derek um, did write a little bit about practical, what we call practical ethics, but most of his work was quite, quite theoretical. But I think the... The work on future generations shows how the boundary between ethical theory and practical ethics is rather porous. So I think you can't really do practical ethics in any serious way unless you have some views about the correct theory in ethics. And what you'll f find is, I think, that as you do practical ethics, as Derek was doing in um, the work on future generations, it will throw up problems for your theory. So even if you say, well, I'm not really, in I'm not, you know, I'm a pure philosopher. I'm not really interested in um, these these real life issues. Something like the repugnant conclusion, though it does raise serious questions about population uh, size, it's a, it's a theoretical implication of a, of a, of a position, um, a principal position in ethical theory, which, if you accept that position, um, then you have to accept the, the, the you have to accept as an implication. So the so practical ethics provides a test for theories as well as 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 well as a theory providing arguments and conclusions in practical ethics.